Welcome to this video on object-oriented programming in Python, specifically looking at multi-level inheritance. So what we're going to be learning is demonstrating the principle of multi-level inheritance, having come from the perspective that we've looked at the different types of inheritance in the previous videos, including single and multiple. It's very easy to get confused between multiple inheritance and multi-level inheritance. But if you look at these diagrams, it makes it quite obvious, uh, the difference. So if we come back to our real life example, you can think of an example of your father being a grandmaster at chess. And if you, for example, were extremely good at the piano and you danced, your very fortunate son would then, if not that this is exactly how it works genetically, but he would inherit chess playing abilities along with your piano and your dance moves. So if you look at this diagram here, this is how multi-level inheritance works. You have a class C, which derives from class B, which derives from class A, and therefore class C would possess all the attributes and the methods that class A has. And you can see how it differs from multiple inheritance where you have a class which extends two different classes. Another example of multi-level inheritance would be something like this. So you have a vehicle. All cars are vehicles, so they inherit from the vehicle class. And then you could have the sports car. This is Aston Martin's ultimate sports car, which inherits from the car class. Now, when multiple inheritance is when child class derives attribute and methods from more than one parent class, multi-level inheritance is referring to a series of inheritance, and that's the key, with a class at the first level and a class at the second level. The creation of a class at the third level would mean that this class would inherit all the attributes and the methods of the class at the second level, and obviously in, in so doing, it would access all the attributes and methods of the class at the first level. So that's how it works. An example that we're going to be looking at is as such. So we have a student, we have a computing student. Now all computing students are students. We have a top computing student who's a genius and fantastic. Obviously he is also, or she, is a computing student. So this inherits from this, this inherits from this. And we know that top computing student also, and we'll demonstrate this in a minute, inherits all the attributes and the methods from student. So this shows an example of the attributes and methods there, there, and we're going to create a little interesting method in top computing to see if he's eligible for a reward by actually passing in the attributes from the student class and from the computing student class to, to demonstrate that this actually works. So this is an example of multi-level inheritance. So let's see what that looks like in practice. So first of all, we're going to have class student. We define our init method. And always have the self a student would have names like attributes like name, which we're going to allow for the user to input. Age, double brackets, because we're allowing for an integer input there. have a method which prints the details. So we just print self name, print self age, print self gender. Now our next class, which would be a computing student who by definition is also a student, would extend the student class. So we're inheriting from the student class. 
and let's create a little init method for the computing student, pass it the self parameter. Now, this is interesting, this is a new, new use of a keyword, which is super. And this allows us to, if I type this in, access the relevant method and attribute of the base class or the parent class that we're referring to. Now, at this point, I can say enter the marks for your first three tests, and this is just demonstrating a little program that's going to do something clever. So I could say self test one, get some input. Test three. If the user is going to enter that, we're going to have a little method which says get marks, and this method is simply going to print marks. So self test one, print. Let's move that up a little bit. Self test two and self test three. So, you're getting the hang of doing this. We're now going to create our last class, which is a top computing student, whatever that is, which extends the computing student. So, it inherits from the computing student class, but not directly from the student class, but indirectly, as we discussed, it does. going to use our super keyword again, read the notes and play around with what this means and its implications. And here we're going to add up the total marks, so self-test 1, self-test 2, and that should give us the total marks. You might want to print that as well, so I'll just say print the total marks. And actually we could do that in a display method as well. So I'll just add a little display method and we can prove that it is actually working by printing name, age, and gender, which is inherited from the student class. Let's go all the way up there. And here, we can print the total marks. So that would be self test one plus self test two plus self test three. And finally, we can add a method just to show that you can add interesting methods, not just methods which print results of things. And we're going to create a little method which finds out if this wonderful student is eligible for a reward. For the sake of Simplicity, we're going to make slightly ridiculous criteria and we're going to say if this student has an age which is above a certain, say 13, and their, their marks, their total marks is above 90, you would print you're eligible for a reward, if not, you're not. So you can try that for yourself. The main point over here really was the fact that we have three classes. We have student, we have computing student, and we have top computing student. Each of these extends the other. And you'll note when you call an object, you play around with the methods, that top computing student can deal with the attributes and methods in student. And that's multi-level inheritance at work.